Hey guys, Sean from Invest to Live here. Uh, got a really good one for you today, I think. You know, you ever think about how to double your money or what it would take to actually double that investment? Well, there's a really easy way to figure it out. It's called the Rule of 72. It's a mathematical formula that's very easy to understand. Anyone can do this on the back of a napkin. And I'm going to run through what it is, um, how to think about it from a timestamp of both inflation and accuracy, as well as give you a couple of examples across a couple of different asset classes. Uh, as always, we really appreciate a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, really helps us out and, and seriously really do appreciate that. So please, if you don't mind, we'd love it if you'd hit that like button for us. Uh, additionally, I'm not your financial advisor. I'm not providing financial advice. Just some entertainment and education in and around the finance sector. So please make sure that anytime you make an investment decision, you're seeking out guidance from licensed professionals to help you do so until you feel very comfortable in the underlying risks and chances of losing your money. So with that said, let's jump in. The rule of 72 is a mathematical formula that basically states that the time to double your investment equals the number 72 divided by R, R being the rate of return, 1%, 2%, 3% on. Now, the beauty of this rule is that it makes it very easy to understand at a glance what kind of rate of return you need to achieve your goals by a time period. So if I want to double my money in 10 years, <laughs> I can figure it out by looking at the rate of return. Now the converse is we can also reverse the formula to understand what kind of rate of return I need versus how long I have to get there. So it's really good to look at it from both perspectives as in I know what I can get for a rate, I wanna understand time, or I understand what I have for time and I need to understand the rate I need to look for. So just helpful when you're thinking about your investment decisions, what you might wanna invest in, et cetera. Now a couple of caveats I wanna throw out there right away. Uh, inflation's always a factor, not taking into respect the current inflation rate right now, but just in general, <laughs> we know inflation exists. So your money in 10 years will most likely not be what it's worth today. So just keep that in mind that even though you'll have that growth and you'll double down, there will still be some degradation of value. Additionally, a really good point to think about as well when we're talking about the rule of 72 is that although it is pretty darn accurate, it does deviate to some degree. So sometimes it could be using the number 70 or 69.3, et cetera. Rule of 72 though, typically for the point of this exercise is pretty much close enough and give you, gives you a really good idea of what to focus on. So rather than hit you with a whole bunch of fluff, I'm gonna jump right in here and give you some examples and just show you how easy it is to really do this. So let me share my screen here and uh, hopefully I've got this thing zoomed in close enough that you can all see it pretty easily. <clears throat> so boom, there it is, the rule of 72, where T equals 72 over R. And again, T, T is time, R is the rate. So it's really simple stuff here. So I wanna take a couple of different asset classes that we sort of run into all the time or always seem to get questions about or always have people wondering if this makes sense to do this, what it's gonna impact my overall financial picture, et cetera. So I chose five here that I thought would be a pretty good fit based on the audience I typically see and the questions I receive. So we wanna start with bonds. We'll look at some dividends, uh, ideal tech stocks, what we're seeing in the crypto space as well, and also just index funds, which I think is kind of a nice middle ground to understand this. Now, one thing I wanna also call out is what we're, what we're trying to understand is that <laughs> we're looking for a stable sort of measure of rate over time. Now I know in the real world, there's always deviation, but when you scale back far enough, we can look at sort of typical yields over time based on different types of asset classes. So we know that the general stock market rate is somewhere between eight and 12%. We know real estate has certain rates. Bonds are not hard to understand because you can buy them over long periods of time. We know dividends typically will rise and fall, but not by much. So there's gonna be some, somewhat of less deviation on the more, what I would say, expected types or more standard asset classes. Whereas like tech flying stocks or crypto funds, et cetera, there might be some need to come in and out of different positions to make sure you maintain that rate of return. But either way, it's still just an interesting exercise to understand how it works. So let's jump into the math and it's pretty simple. I wanna understand how long it's gonna to take to double my investment. <clears throat> so let's start off with something really simple. And this one's gonna be pretty obvious, but I wanted to do this on purpose. So I wanna understand how long it's gonna to take to double my money if I invest in bonds that are paying a 1% interest rate. Uh, some bonds are really only paying about a 1% interest rate and there's only a little bit of deviation here. In years past, we've seen long-term treasuries paying better than that, but really right now it's not much better. So I wanna go with 1% to make this an obvious exercise. So what we're literally gonna do is do 72 divided by 0.01. <clears throat> Of course, when I forget my equal sign, it blows my entire thing here, right? And, sorry guys. Of course, 
like a ding-a-ling, I entered my percentage wrong. 72 divided by one is obviously 72. So when you're, if you're investing your money at 1% rate of return, it's literally going to take about 72 years to double your money. So if you let that sink in, you can see why bonds are really not designed to be high growth. They're really designed to be sort of securing your money <laughs> towards the back end of your retirement goals or towards when you're starting to come out of the market a little bit. Now that said, of course, a balanced portfolio is not gonna be in any one of these things. It's gonna be typically balanced. Make sure you've got pieces of each component depending on where you are and where you are in your overall financial planning perspective. Now we're not gonna make that mistake again on the math, so I'm gonna clear that up now. Let's think about dividend stocks. Some of those blue chips that pay about 4%. 4% is a pretty good dividend rate, pretty consistent, you know, especially if we're putting that money back in and we're growing over time, these are great things. And there is a lot of value in how we can double our money there. But one thing I noticed on YouTube, and I wanna call this out, is there's always this sort of motion of, I'm gonna retire super early and I'm gonna do it on dividend stocks. Hey, great, and more power to you. I think it's a great thing. But keeping in mind, it's going to take a very long time to build a nest egg with just those low end dividend payers that typically won't see a lot of price appreciation. That's not to say you won't. I understand during times like we're in right now, we're seeing growth in general across the board. But just keep in mind that growth isn't always steady, especially in those blue stock payers of that 4% give or take range. So it's the same exercise, right? It's gonna be equals 72 divided by 4%. You're looking at about 18 years to double your money at a 4% rate of return. So, you know, 18 years is a long time, but if you think about it over the course of starting very early in your career, maybe <coughs> getting into a 401k into some of those blue chip type stocks, you can double at 18, double again in another 18. You're gonna be pretty close to retirement and you'll have doubled up twice. That's not a bad place to be. I think that's the way a lot of folks look at it in general, especially in the way that we understand retirement today and what we're trying to work towards on those goals. Tech stocks is where we start to get a little bit more fun. Now, I'm gonna say as a caveat again on this one, there's, there's high growth stocks that are high growth for a little while, but making sure that they stay high growth long-term, that's the real challenge. So this requires sort of a lot more of an active take on it. You're gonna to have to be managing what you're putting your money into, where you're throwing it. Perhaps you can find some really good ETFs, index funds, mutual funds that focus on high growth stocks. But just keep in mind, those higher rates of return can get a little bit wonky. And there's always the risk of money coming out of those areas or some major failure in a product or not getting off the ground. And you can see a big wipeout as well. So this is where, like I always mention in my videos, make sure you understand the downside risk anytime you're looking at high rates of return. Um, but that said, though, it's still kind of fun to see how fast you can double down at these higher interest rates or rates of return. So again, we're going to look at our 72. We're going to divide that by 16 here. And wow, that's pretty cool, right? You can actually double your money in only four and a half years, assuming a 16% return. But again, as part of a balanced portfolio, this is a great way to balance all these numbers out. And you get some of that four and a half mixed in with some of that 18. That's where you sort of find that middle ground to find a good place to really double down and understand the future of your money. Now, I threw crypto in here just because I think that crypto presents an interesting use case for the rule of 72, right? This is a case where if you can get a really, really high interest rate, and by the way, I know 25% um, might seem like nothing when we look at the insane rates of returns we're seeing of some of these things, hundreds of percents a year, thousands in some cases. But I want to be at least realistic because I don't want to look at everything being a 20x return a year because I think that still with all the ups and the downs and everything in between, when you get in, how long you hold, what your expectations are, I think there's just so much risk in there. But I still thought it'd be kind of fun to see what a rate, a rate of return of 25% would be because um, that's obviously huge in, the, in a modern market, a place that we see today like the stock market, et cetera. So let's do it again, 72 divided by 25. And you're literally doubling your money once and under three years. I mean, that's pretty crazy, right? Like and within 10 years, you'll have essentially tripled up plus a little bit on your money. So even if you're not starting with a ton, being able to triple down is pretty cool. But again, with this comes a ton of risk in the crypto space. You might hit it big and get a, you know, a, a 10 or 20 or 30 X return. And a lot of people have, or you might pick the wrong one, put your money in and then two hours later, you're half what you had in there. And now you've got to catch your way back up again. So just things to be aware of. Where I really wanted to end on was <coughs> sort of the general total market index fund. You know, we see a lot of them. Vanguard has them. Schwab has them. Um, you know, Spider has them. I think that the number was anywhere really between 8 and 12. And, the, and typically what we're seeing is like 10% is that long-term market number from everything I've seen over the past several years. Um, what I wanted to focus on was 9%. because I think 9 is a nice conservative number, expectation of growth across the entire marketplace. 
it's something that I think you can build a portfolio on long term. So let's just do it at this number and we're going to talk through it a little bit. Take the 72 divided by the nine. We're looking at about eight years. Now, eight years to double your money is great. If you're thinking about this from the perspective of I'm going to retire in 40 years, this gives you a lot of time to continuously double up on your money. One would also imagine during this process, in fact, for all of these pieces that you're going to be adding to your underlying base. So it's not just putting X amount of dollars in and having it cycle through this rule of 72. Anywhere where you can add additional capital, increase what you're adding to the baseline, find additional upside within these holdings. This all helps you to really increase at a, at a much more accelerated pace to get to that number you're trying to reach. And I think that this is one of those really basic rules that not everyone's aware of, but it's something you should just know in terms of what you're getting from a time or rate perspective and how one affects the other. Um, I'll end with this and I'll stay away from being too technical. Variable correlation is very important anytime we're looking at data or numbers or anything like that. And this is a topic that I really can go deep on. So if you're interested in the way correlation works with variables or the way we look at statistical relevancy of the numbers within the math of investments, um, please let me know below. Uh, I hope everyone's watched all the way through to this point. So if you have, I'd love a comment on it. Really appreciate that. And otherwise, I'm going to make it a pretty short video compared to normal. I really appreciate the time, and I hope you take some time to go and give this rule of 72 a try with your own numbers. Um, and I'd love to see what you think below, if it works for you, if it doesn't, or if you're running into any issues. So with that, uh, as always, thanks so much. Thanks for watching, and have a great uh, week. Talk to you soon.